Hey guys, I've got a quick video where I'd like to expand upon the idea of an IP address pool for a DHCP server. In this example we have here, the DHCP server has a starting and ending IP address. That means that as clients request addresses, the DHCP server can give out any address between 192.168.0.2 and 0.254, including these two addresses themselves. That means that there are 253 possible addresses that might be given out. Now you probably did the math and took 254 minus 2 and got 252. However, we include .2 and .254, which means the math is high minus low plus 1. So that's 254 minus 2, which is 252, plus 1, giving us 253 addresses. Now, you can specify it either by starting and ending IP addresses, or some routers might ask you for the starting address and the number of addresses to give out, in which case you'd just put in this IP address as the first, and 253 as the number of addresses to give away. Now how do we determine what addresses can be given out is affected by several factors. First off, our subnet mask is very important. We cannot give out starting and ending addresses that don't match the subnet mask. So in this example, the first 24 bits must be the same. So in these two starting and ending addresses, the first 24 bits must be the same on those also. So we can't violate the subnet mask. The other consideration we have is what static IP addresses are being given out. So for example, this router has an IP address of 192.168.0.1. So that number cannot be inside the range being given out here. 192.168.0.2 comes after the .1. Therefore, that's not inside the range. Therefore, it's safe to um, have it statically assigned. Now, if we had another computer on our network, say a web server or some sort of file server that was statically assigned an IP address of .2, then we'd want to make our starting IP address start with .3 or some higher number. We could also assign a static IP address to a device of 192.168.0.254, in which case we would reduce down the ending IP address so that it didn't overlap with the static IP addresses. The entire idea is that the range of available dynamic addresses must not include any static IP addresses that have been manually configured.